on guys Aquan here back with another video here to give you all an album review uh this time it's actually of jim jones an uh an older school new york artist who dropped an album recently and this really has been the year of a lot of collab albums and this one is no different this time you got him collabing with hitmaker <clears throat> uh for an interesting cut and i wanted to get straight into it so uh jim jones is obviously uh, a, ly uh, a lyricist from the older school of New York. I believe he's part of um, um, The Locks, who uh, I personally really enjoy, enjoy in small doses, but I definitely wanted to take the opportunity because this is gonna be my first, I wanted this to be my first Jim Jones album. Uh, so I wanted to tap in and, and see what was what was going on. Uh, I know he has, I saw something with him and I believe Harry Fraud. Uh, so I wanna tap in with that eventually too. Uh, I think that was a couple years ago. But overall thoughts on this project, I have to say, I was overall mostly disappointed, I would say. I think there were some higher highs. There was a very high highs on this project, but overall, it we'll get into it. But I was overall kind of let down by this project, especially hearing a lot of the features uh, and songs that I have heard from Jim Jones versus both modern and, you know, from back in the day. So let's get into it. Uh, so the writing, I'm going to give a good I think it was just a good uh, Jim Jones is obviously you know a, a hardened street rapper but for this album he took a very large portion of it to talk about his relationships and <clears throat> how he feels uh, you know talking to certain girls and things of that nature but I just don't think that he quite had the uh, proper verbiage to uh, describe relationships in a way that was compelling, really. Like, it, he has a lot of bars, of course, because it's Jim Jones, that's why he has the good, but things like comparing, you know, your girl and cocaine, your things like comparing your girl and the love you have for your girl to, you know, your appreciation you have for the plug, it, it doesn't really, like, land, right? Take the charge for me. If you fuck with me, take a bullet for me. If you fuck with me, lie about it on the stand. If you really die, take 10 for me. If you want the crap. And uh, that was a big problem for like a big portion of the record was just bars where it was like, okay, cool. This is a double entendre or whatever. But I don't really, it, it comes off as weird when you talk about a whole nother person in, in, in this context. Uh, and... We'll get into it more in the flow, but I just don't, I think that Jim Jones, if he was going to approach this topic style, I think it would have done him some good to see how the masters of this do it and then sort of go from there rather than what I feel like what he did, which was kind of, you know, apply his, you know, Jim Jones formula, just put love lyrics instead. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give the writing a good the flows i'm gonna give a mid and this was the, i think this was my biggest problem with the record uh was honestly the delivery i was not a fan of the sort of deeper raspy delivery that he had when he was describing certain uh, uh certain escapades he had had um and obviously uh with this and the writing i do want to make it clear that there were high points like first plug and status update right uh, where he's not, where his tracks are not relationship focused, and he's really able to thrive and flourish, especially Status Update. Really, really, really good song. But for the most part, his delivery does does not match what the song is about, especially on a song like "Fu," which, ugh, like it, it again, it it's not like the the flow would be good for another kind of song but like i i think of love songs as like you know i'm being taken into a, a journey where we're, we're going and we're talking to this girl and either there are these exciting new experiences and it's supposed to be sort of softer and more vulnerable but his delivery just didn't really convey that whatsoever right uh and it really just did not hit uh surprisingly <clears throat> Uh, musical execution, I'm actually going to give this a great on musical execution. And it's going to sound weird given everything else I've said. 
But Jim Jones made an interesting decision on this to not be in charge of any of the choruses. And I don't know if that was on purpose uh, or just kind of a byproduct of him feeling more comfortable to give the, you know, love songs to other people. But uh, most of the courses on here were other people and it, and most of them kill it. Most of them really, really do a really good job, uh, except for Trav on that one song, which I wasn't really a fan of. And it sucks because that was actually a song I overall liked, but I just wasn't a fan of Trav. But other than that, Gunshot was a fire chord. Girl, you know the vibes. That shit all the time. Dallas High was fire. Um, <clears throat> Even Jeremiah's chorus, I think we kind of have to be honest with ourselves in saying that, like, Jeremiah's music isn't aging as well as a lot of people would like it to. But I think that his chorus on this was a pretty solid chorus. Uh, and overall, Gunshot, uh, a little bit weird, but I still really liked it. And I definitely come back to that song. That was definitely, again, when his stuff is not relationship focused, it was, it, it really. I think his delivery, again, works, uh, which is why I give it a mid and not a bad, right? Because there's a couple songs where the delivery does work on here. But uh, overall, the features were pretty great, man. And I feel like, <clears throat> you know, when I talk about Tana Talk 4, uh, one of my issues with it is that I feel like while the features are great, they don't add much to the song, right? They don't contribute to the overall world. There's not anything that a feature did that Benny couldn't have done. I feel the exact opposite on this, and that's why I really like the features, is that I feel like a lot of them bring something that Jim Jones himself could not bring, which is really great. Benny was also on this album. Speaking of which, Benny killed it, bro. Y'all got it, bro. Benny has some, if you listen to Real Rap by G Herbo as well, Benny Loki on a feature run right now that's like really crazy. He's not he's not the biggest you know artist, so it's not gonna get the most attention, but Benny really is developing like a consistent catalog of features in my opinion. This one was no different. I think he outrapped Jim Jones, uh, and they've been on songs together before. But I just thought that the way that uh, uh, Benny Butcher's flow came in, I thought it was really really strong. But I, overall, I really really liked all the features. Uh, yeah, I would say that I really liked both the features and the musical execution. Sorry, I know I kind of jammed them both together, but um, I would give the features a great as well, right? Um, yeah. I'll give them an amazing. I'll give the features an amazing because there wasn't, like I said, they brought a lot. So I'll actually give the features an amazing. <clears throat> uh, production, this was another weak portion of the record for me. I'm going to... I said mid on my little sheet, but that feels a bit harsh. I'm gonna go with good for now. I'm gonna go with good for now. I've never been a big fan of Hitmaker as a producer. I just feel like his beats always feel very empty and typical. Uh, now, he does a pretty good job with the love ballad style of production, but it just feels very uninventive and derivative. And so, I wasn't really like blown away by any of the beats on this song or on this album. Um, besides Status Update, which again, best song on the album, absolutely beautiful. Um, and it honestly kind of makes me wish that I heard more samples on this album uh, from, from Hitmaker. Uh, but yeah, overall, it was cool. Their beats were knocking. They gave me something to bob my head to, and I really enjoyed it. And Hitmaker's obviously, you know, a pretty consistent uh, producer, but a lot of times I just feel like his, his, his production is very uh, empty and dime a dozen and you know just doesn't it doesn't feel all that unique i should say right like hearing an alchemist beat i know that's an alchemist beat right and for as versatile as kanye and hip boy are when i hear a hip boy beat i know it's hip boy when i hear a kanye beat i know it's kanye i don't really get that feeling with hip boy and so I wasn't the biggest, you know, overall I just wasn't the biggest fan of the production, but I'll still give it a good because again, you know, the beats gave me something to bounce to uh, and they weren't bad. They were just a bit boring and derivative. So I think overall, I'm gonna give this uh, record a good, uh, I think overall I'm gonna give this record a good. Like I said, it definitely had its highs and I definitely, think that uh, there was some quality moments on this record, some quality choruses, 
but I think that given that the main problems on this record were Jim Jones, I do feel like that also knocks it a, down a peg from being great. And <clears throat> really wish that he maybe, again, um, enlisted more help, pulled from more influences uh, when he went about going about this. Because I can tell that this is a very, you know, new style of music for somebody like a Jim Jones, or at least it, that's what it sounds like. And it just doesn't sound like he's all that suited to it. Uh, similar to Dusty Lil' Kane on uh, Flew to Love or something like that. So yeah, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, listen to this project. Let me know what you all think about this. This was actually a very difficult project to review, which is why it's taken me so long to review it. You know what I mean? Uh, and yeah, so with that being said, make sure to subscribe. I'm almost at 70 subs. With that being said, peace, y'all.